<laughs> Casey Balsham, one more time. Thanks, for guys. Casey Small Balsham. but mighty you are. I'll put your phone oh, down. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, hi. You did it. You we did, did it. it. We did it. Ooh. I, you know when uh, we're talking about kids and yeah. them sucking? Yeah. The, yeah. So I have two nieces. Yeah. And I did this experiment with them. What is it? The first one, she lives in Boston. I went to see her and uh, I farted. And she immediately laughed. That was the experiment? Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's a good kid. She's got yeah. a good sense of humor. Yeah, she yeah, gets yeah, yeah, yeah. it. That's like comedy 101. Yeah. And then yeah. I went to the other one in New Jersey, and I farted, and she thought it was gross. I'm like, you suck as a kid. Which is weird, because New Jersey is a fart. <laughs> Pretty much. New Jersey like, is a How do you not like giant You're a child. It's like a little noise coming out of your ass. That's automatically funny. I think I, it, I, it still is. Like People don't like, like fart, fart yeah. jokes, and it's like grow up fart jokes are for the grown-ups they are <laughs> funny they're great they're clever and i always want to hear them yeah <laughs> so you know i was thinking of asking you how long have you known that you wanted to be a mother but then i realized that's the wrong question because i think it's very normal to want to be a mother i think yeah. it's the other way around when people don't want to have kids well i think those are the people you should ask that question. Well, yeah, but I also think that people flip flop. I think that some people, like I did know when I was young. That's why I played Barbies till I was eighteen because I was like, these are all my children. You know, like I was like, <laughs> it was a very How strange long have you reaction. Been when did you start playing with Barbies? Like, ten, eleven. I mean, like I forget. Probably like yeah, like really early. But you weren't consciously thinking about being a mom. I, but it was like I enjoyed having the like... A little family. Yes. Yeah, I enjoyed having oh, a family. Okay. But by the time I was 18, like some of these couples had been together for like a decade. Do you understand? <laughs> like, this, this, these were people that were in it to win it. Um, but also like I just... I When I was younger, I would always like write names. Like I always was... Like when third grade, I was like fantasizing about my children's names. Yeah. Like it was just... it That was one of those things for me. But I know that some people don't get that until later in life. Right. I know that some people don't get it until like their 30s. I know that some people never get it. It's just... It is a weird yeah. thing. Thing. Like for me, which is weird because when my sister was born six and a half years after me, like, right, you know, right. I was like, fuck her. Like, I was like, get her out of my house. <laughs> like, this baby has no place here. Like, so I didn't like her as a baby, but I was like, yeah, I wanted children of my own, but just right. not my parents' children. <laughs> I mean, this, like, this is just, you know, there's, there's not that many differences between men and women, but there's a few big ones, and this is one of the biggest ones. Yeah. And that's something I'll never, like, I'll never know what that feels like. No, and you I'm won't. very interested in that. It's hiccups in your asshole. <laughs> is that what it feels like? And it, last night, I, she had hiccups when I was on stage, and I was like, it was just, it's like your, your asshole, like, pulsates, because her head is down there. And I said it out loud, and somebody in the crowd literally just goes, ew. And I was like, no, I get it. No, I, I shouldn't have said it out loud, but I just, it's just, it's top of mind when it's happening, you know, when you're like, hey, so, and then all of a sudden your butt is like, you're like, well, I'm going to tell you. Um, but no, it is, and also, yeah, and also I think it takes sometimes men a minute to connect with their children too, even when they're born. Because oh, definitely. Because like they're just sucking on the mom for fucking ages. They're just yeah. like the mom is just like lifeless on a bed with her tits like down to here and her nipples are all blah, you know. And the dad's just like, "Can I help?" And you're like, "Fucking jump." Yeah, I think that's why here. it's easier for dads to leave. You know. Yeah. Because you you don't have that connection with them. You don't carry them for nine months. No. You can just fuck off. Because it is, it is, it, even though I haven't, like, I didn't love being pregnant this whole time, now that I'm in, like, the last weeks and she moves so much that I'm like, oh, fuck, like, I think I am going to miss, because it is a very connected thing when she, because it's not like a kick, you know, like, she's like, like, it feels like she's like, it's just a part fucking, of you. Yeah. And it's she's not like a foreign thing that's around. in you. This is who you are now. Yeah. You're a pregnant woman. Plus, like, once she comes out, like, <laughs> there's no going back, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to be like, I'm not pregnant for 10 more days, yay! <laughs> or I'm not a parent yet, I don't have a baby yet for 10 more days. But yeah, it is, it's more, you're definitely more connected as the woman, because yeah. she's, she's fucking trying to escape. It's I think crazy. that's why, uh, when, you know, if your dad doesn't love you it hurts but it's different but if your mom doesn't love you as a person i think that hurts way more <laughs> yeah, just because yeah. like you fucking carried me for nine months 
And you hate me, you piece of shit woman? Well, that's what we're creating. Now we're creating a bunch of women that are forced to carry babies. It's kind of yeah. crazy. But, I mean, hopefully when the baby comes, they would be like, okay, right. you're, not, you're not so bad. But, yeah. No, I think it would suck if your parents, any either of your parents were like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you suck, you know? Dang. Okay, I'm interested in the finances okay. of it. Not not that I'm ever going to do that and have a kid that's expensive. But <laughs> how did it get to 90K, if you don't mind? Oh man, it. it's 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 egg retrievals, which are the first part. They take all your eggs out, and those can cost yeah. between like ten and thirteen. And so we had to do four of those. Oh one, my God. one was covered by insurance, and then transferring. When you why when did you, get you have to embryo. do four for insurance to make sure? No, 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 just because we didn't get enough egg, like we didn't get enough eggs, because oh, you okay. have to get the eggs out, and then the sperm implants them. And then they become an embryo, and then they have to make it a week. And then after that week, they have to go to genetic testing and make sure that they have the right number of chromosomes so that if they implant it in you, it's not just going to, like, not wow. survive. So we had to go do that a few times. Uh, and then when they implant it in you, that costs money. And then I also had to get a couple, like, once you – we don't know anything about our bodies, but once somebody's up there with, like, a fucking wand, they're like, oh, there's a fibroid <laughs> here. you got a septum. So then they had to get a couple Jesus. different, like, surgeries. And then there's medicine, like, because you have to shoot up yourself. Like, so it gets, so the medicine, like, so it all just, like, like, like every time they send you a bill, you're just like, like, just Just twitching. uh, Yeah. But at a certain point, it's like, it's like, at a certain point, once you hit 90 grand, you're like, what is money? Is this, what what is this? It's not real. But, you know, what we did do is we put a lot on a credit card and when, when, and and we took a trip with all the points (laughs) before we got pregnant. We took a three week trip to France and Spain. So that baby already gave you a first trip. So, if anything, you owe that baby a trip. Well, she, no, she's, she's, I'm giving her a hammer when she gets it. So the whole time they're doing, she needs to go to work. When yeah. you do, what is Robbie's the Robbie's a husband. What's his role in this? Is he like jerking off in cups? Yes. Ah. Yes. Yes. I'm crying and laughing and sweating and don't know what to do with my emotions. And he's like, "Is it in this cup? <laughs> this is the room here." And like you're like, yeah. Yeah, he, he basically, well, uh, well he, I put him on a couple supplements, just like some vitamins and stuff like that. And he couldn't, this was the worst part, he couldn't take his like hair stuff while we were trying because it's like so bad for sperm. And he's like, and he's so, like, doesn't want to go, like, he's so concerned with yeah, his hair. Yeah, the man has to he look gets, good, you know? Yeah. Can't be thin. Yeah, he's so <laughs> concerned with hair. Streets. And I had to be like, no, Rogaine, no. <laughs> <laughs> whatever uh, whatever the other thing is called. He was just like sitting there just watching his hair fall out while I was like, you got to get this shit pregnant. And the minute I got pregnant, he was like, <laughs> like the straight back to or whatever, but it's so bad for sperm. I've so, actually never paid attention that Robbie is balding. I've never seen that. He looks good. He doesn't look like, but but you know, to him, he looks at it like he, blow, right, right. he blow dries it now. Like he's got a whole system to like, you know, fool us. That's funny. <laughs> He's like a he's like a lady with makeup. He's like, uh, you know. So you probably officially have the most expensive baby in the world of comedy for sure. I don't think maybe I in the com- I mean, I feel like there's probably other comics that have done IVF, but I will. I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they got to ninety. Yeah, well, well yeah, cool. we were lucky that we had insurance going around. We had a couple family members help. We had a couple friends help. So we probably we were out of pocket probably about half of that. Yeah, we should uh, get you like a plaque to commemorate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a YouTube hundred thousand views, yeah. like ninety k, ninety k baby. <laughs> yeah, this baby better pay me back. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what kind of job she can do. Are you she hoping something? Are you hoping for anything specifically, like personality wise? What kind of oh, girl you know what? would you want? I have? just I just want her to be like, fun, like I just like I want her. If to she's be, like, like you, that's good. Funny. You're a fun person. Yeah, but if she's like Robbie, she's gonna, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, no, this is only funny like, for me. You guys don't know Robbie. It's it's. He's just calm. He's a comic yeah. also, so he's very funny. But like, he's just a more calm person. So uh, here's the thing: I have a friend, and like her, like so my nephew too was just yeah. like he was like at four months old. He was at restaurants like. Wah! Like he was fucking. He's like a people. Yeah, you person. want a kid with a personality. Want, I just wanted to have a yeah. personality. But you know, if she doesn't, I'll still be like, isn't she the funniest person in the world? Because <laughs> I have a friend with a baby, and her baby's a fucking dud. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, do a trick or something. And There's she's just nothing worse sister. than a sad baby. It's like, no, I don't want no sad? duds. I don't want no what duds. What kind of baggage did you come to this earth yeah, with? Yeah, you're already sad. That's maybe yeah, sad babies. I think probably have been here before, and they're like, I know how this all turns yeah, out. And it's yeah, yeah. I know the like, ending. This the is ending. not. I'm not a new soul. I've seen this here. movie before. Yes, <laughs> yes, Taylor. Ends with me working at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, 
we can't all have dreams. Some, <laughs> some people have to work at Walmart. <laughs> oh, when you said that, also one of my nieces kind of worried me because we were on the phone the other day. And she told me that she wanted to be famous. And then yeah, I go, too. okay. And I said, what, what do you want to do? Yeah. And she goes, I just want to be famous. Yeah. And that kind of made me sad because I was like, I thought she was going to say I want to sing or mm-hmm. no, there's dance no, or do any. It's she just, didn't mention any talent. It's just the fame. She just, just wants to fame. be famous. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. Like, I mean, I said that when I was younger, but like I had a specific thing. Right, like, right. I did want it. I wanted to be a singer. Yeah, then, I mean, and then I've like, told oh, you this you before. Be able to sing. <laughs> my my dream career for you is you you singing in a comedy musical. I want to do that. There was that one in New York when I first moved to New York. There was a comedy musical, and we only got to do like six shows of it. But that would have been my fucking dream. yeah. My yeah. dream is it to matches do Broadway your personality. and comedy. So if anybody knows. Anybody. <laughs> Text me, tag me, email my hotmail, like fucking I got shit. Yeah, yeah. I would love to do yeah, I would I mean I I think I have bigger like I, I would I would love to do Broadway stuff more. I would give up comedy if I could just work in the world of theater. Not even on the really? stage, but like you would uh, give up casting yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I love this job, but not all the time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it's a I, crazy I, job. I probably would I mean, miss it, but like if I was in, <laughs> if I was like in some kind of like creative process for like Broadway stuff or like casting and get to like just watch people fucking. That's their what face. grinds your gears. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Hell yeah, yeah. I, that's I, what I, I wanted to, before the pandemic. I was ready to quit comedy because I was like, "This fucking so I hate this job." There's this a lot of people fun. Quit. I was like, yeah. "Yeah," but I. But the, then the pandemic happened, and I was like, "Oh, I just needed a break." <laughs> 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 like I know that there was a lot of death, but like personally, I, I thrived. Personally, I thrived. <laughs> How is Barb doing? Barb is my mom, yeah. and I don't know if you guys know anybody named Barb, but being named Barb is, what did I say, is a personality trait. Um, <laughs> Barb is good. Barb Barb lives in her own world, and that world seems fucking silly as hell. Yeah. Yeah, she just visited my sister. I just remembered my, her at your wedding. She just is. And she's, she was just doing weird shit. She, said she was <laughs> probably high. She like <laughs> she, she ate like five gummies or something. But like I, my mom just makes shit up. She's like the kind of mom where you just like you'll ask her something and she'll just she just thinks she needs to know. Like she she never could say like I don't know. So she'll just fucking make shit up. Yeah. And you're just like absolutely not. Like so, it's uh it's it's it's. A, it's a, oh, you used to do another joke that I like about when your mom and your dad separated and then oh, they yeah. each got do that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> they, they like that one. <laughs> I stopped telling it because I don't want to get canceled. Um, It's my parents' divorce, so my dad is dating an Asian woman and my mom is dating a black guy. So I was like, it's not like they hated each other enough to go gay. They just were like, oh, bigger dick, smaller hole. (laughs) 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 See? See, you you could tell that joke eight years ago and now people go... Yeah, that's a good joke. You're not gonna get canceled. <laughs> but I did make matches. I had matchbooks that said "bigger dick, smaller." Yeah, that's hole. good. That's good merch. <laughs> that you know, bad, bigger dick, smaller thing. hole. It's a yeah. good, make T-shirts and everything. And they've both. They've all heard the joke. And, you know. Yeah, like, and I met them at yeah. the, your wedding. The Asian lady was there, and the black guy was Ill- there. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh Ill- shit! Ill- look Ill- at the joke in person. That's crazy. <laughs> it really, it really. <laughs> you're like, this wasn't a lie. I'm like, no, no, no. This is this is all happening. Um, but they're all yeah. lovely people. But my dad does hate that joke uh (laughs) but my mom (laughs) loves that joke (laughs) my mom loves that joke (laughs) yeah she's she's all for it (laughs) my dad's like you know (laughs) i'm trying to remember uh when we met because what year did you move to new york 2014 okay so i was two years in then okay yeah that's when we met how has it been your New, New York, York journey so far. You, it's, it, I feel like it's one of those places. I, I like, and it sounds so crazy to say only living here for nine years, but I feel like even in the nine years I've been here, it's changed. Yeah. Like you know, when you first moved to New York, it feels there's this magic to it, and like you're kind of like, especially in the fall. Like I'd lived in California, I'd never seen a season. Yeah. Like, and yeah. all of a sudden the fall was here, and I was like, oh my god, army colored jackets and <laughs> we had fall tree leaves and like things like that, and I just had never. I just I I wore flip flops exclusively. Like on stage, like I was, I was in California, I lived in Hawaii, I was just, I was, you know, like, so that I remember just feeling really magical that you could like walk and kind of stumble into an adventure. And I still feel like that a lot, but sometimes a I just... A little bit feel, less now. It's a little bit, like, now I just feel like I live here, but now I'm like, I don't know where else I would live. Like there's still yeah. so much about New York that I love, but I also hate that kind of like the old schoolness of it is, is 
seems to be like going away. Yeah. Like you hear yeah. about all these like places I've never been, but you hear about all these old school places like closing, closing shutting down yeah. their doors yeah. after a hundred years. We were the best pork cutters <laughs> in fucking all of the Bronx, and I'm like, yeah, I've always, never been to the Bronx, but I'm like, happens. that's sad. Yeah, yeah. like. Um, but I, I still just think it's, I don't know where else I would go. At yeah, this point. I, I felt that way when Cabin was gone, because you remember Cabin? Did you get to yeah, the Cabin? Yeah, I did Cabin. That was the first show I did in New York. Yeah, that was a big show that used to happen yeah. every uh, Thursday? Tuesday or Thursday. Tuesday or Thursday. Yeah, something like that. Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to this day, that building is still sitting there. Nobody's I done there, anything. I thought there was a, rec- there, a new bar there. I haven't seen anything. Oh, last I, time maybe I, I don't know where it is. Then. Yeah, it was on. <laughs> I think I forget because I thought I, I second half between six and seven. Oh, Street. okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I thought they put a new bar there. But yeah, like there are certain things that like close down, and you're just like, oh man, I was here for that. And then the, yeah. yeah, but but I feel like in New York, it, things do just like kind of transfer hands. Did you move closer. with any like? real savings because normally the first year for people here is the hardest year of their lives no 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 so how'd you do i worked in a restaurant oh you worked in a restaurant yeah and the rent wasn't as crazy we were in a three-bedroom 450 square foot apartment yeah so we were like (laughs) truly like you're like robbie would do push-ups and his feet were in the kitchen his torso was lined up at the bathroom and his hands were in the living room yeah it was fucking wild but also i was like this is the cozy like i'd never been in snow so like i was just sitting in my fucking on my love seat couch being like this is so eating drinking duncan we i didn't have duncan in california at the time and so i was like this is really something you know and and now i'm like how did i breathe in that apartment like where did i put my shoes like where did i put my clothes like it was so fucking small but it was uh it it was in hell's kitchen and it was just glorious right but no i had no savings every i started at zero at the beginning of every month yeah, I had a I had a basement room with no windows for five hundred that, bucks. That's a lot of people's first. Yeah, and New York. I would get sad. Yeah. And then I was like, "This is weird." I normally get sad, and then I would go out, and I was like, "Oh, it's because I haven't seen the sun yeah. in three days." Yeah. This is crazy. That is see that <laughs> that is no the sense. thing about New York is that if you're feeling like you can just like walk around and it, it's like you're phys- you physically have to interact with people whether or not you want to so there right. is some kind of right. like energy whether it's like get the fuck out of my way or it's like oh, this is, city is great like <laughs> it, it, it flip flops every day but like I like that part of it coming from LA where you're just sitting in traffic by yourself every day like yeah. uh, well, like just lethargic and just like moving two inches like it's nice to be able to go out in New York and just know that you could just drop yourself anywhere and right. walk and get anywhere when you when you, you know? move when you moved here, muggings were still a thing. Did you ever get mugged? No, but don't don't say it. Well, now it's not gonna happen. I'm sure it the, might happen. No, nobody would mug a pregnant woman. Don't you watch the news? Crime's on the rise. <laughs> <laughs> Although I feel like New York is safer than <laughs> most places at this point. No, never. No, now I'm nervous. No, I have not. No, you'll I be fine. You'll be I fine. I didn't get mugged. Yeah, my my you know, Den Perlman had a story. Uh, I think we moved here around the same time. And he got mugged, but he didn't like to tell it because he got mugged by two women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how pro I'm that, going to your that. Just I'm for that. <laughs> two women just took his wallet. That's <laughs> just pretty funny. Away. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I didn't. I had a friend that got mugged. He was, like, house-sitting for somebody, and they were, like, he was, like, on his way back there, and they took all his stuff. It's yeah. Like, it seems very scary. I, mean, right, so I don't want it to happen to Part of your anybody. New York life. I got mugged, but not in person. I got scammed online. Oh, I almost yeah. just... That yeah. almost just happened to me. Yeah? Trying to buy John Mayer tickets on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go real... I almost gave a lady $500. Cash App and Venmo both were like, don't do it, don't do it. And I was like, why? And like, they both canceled the transaction. <laughs> And the lady was like, oh, my God, what's going on with your account? And then I literally went back on Craigslist, and somebody had said, the lady pretending to be a nurse with COVID is a scammer. And I just screenshotted that and texted it to her, and I was like, you fucking loser. Yeah. But I almost literally I hit send on $500 to see John Mayer. That's like the... Right? That's Beyonce prices, right? Is John Mayer worth $500? <laughs> Listen, and so instead I ended up buying a ticket to a festival in Maryland in the <laughs> fall. And I don't even know how that's going to work because I will have a child. Yeah. But I was like, shh, oh, we can't see him at MSG? Let's head to Oceanside. 
It's so crazy. Wait, so how did you get scammed? What happened to you? So, <laughs> so I, I came here, I had a little bit of savings, and I was looking for a day job while I was doing comedy. And then I found some uh, babysitting thing. Yeah. And, you know, which was already weird, but I didn't know it at the time. Most people don't want a man to be a babysitter. Absolutely <laughs> so not. that was weird. No, no thank you. No <laughs> and these, these people, like, was, like, they sent me a picture of a family, and they were, like, we're this God-fearing family. I don't know why, but that that phrase kind of stuck in my I was like, oh, they must be good people. <laughs> oh, I was like, that would be, I'd be like, they must be fucking creepy people. So the way it works, it's a Nigerian scam. So the way it works is they send you a check, and you deposit it into your account. Oh, and then they account. ask for some back. And then you take some and send it to them. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, the yeah, check yeah. will bounce in two days. Right. So, But so you already you sent the money, so yes. now you're in the red. That's yes, that's, what happened that's, that, that happened. That, yeah. happened to, that's happened a lot, yeah. that one. And I so felt so fucking stupid. So you, how much money did they send you? They sent me two grand, and I sent them $400. And then, I know, <laughs> I know, and then... I was 2013. Get like, I'm over it. Stop being sad. But also, like, I just think about there's times, like, probably like in 2013, like four hundred dollars would have fucking taken yeah. me out. Yeah, yeah, that I would have been bad. like, no, like I'm only now at a point in my life where kind of those numbers are like, oh, I can buy my mom a ticket to come here to visit. I can treat my mom yeah. to a ticket without having to like. You like I, I like I you know I would be like I, if I had if I had guac I have to check my bank account <laughs> like we have to make sure that shit is going through yeah said, but but yeah like, I remember like a big first sign of being okay in New York was if it was late and I could take a cab and not worry about yeah it. you could take a yellow cab the, before that Uber cab, was a that thing that cab money can we close the door please I oh, know thank you. They're trying to tell us to leave. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> very passive talking aggressive guac, over here. Talking guacamole in here, and it's very private. Yeah. It's very so you private. So you, you worked at a restaurant? I worked at the Smith. Uh, I know. On what third. is Smith? You guys all know it's about like, it? Yeah. It's like, it's like a, a really, there's like three of them. It's like an all-American brasserie that's got like really good food, but it, you know, like they've got like a brunch that gets really So it's popular. popular. Yeah, it's popular. You make good money? What? No, it does. I just drove by it. Yeah, the third and eleventh. No, no, no. That one. It's the, they're still on third. There's one in Nomad, and then there's one in Lincoln Center. Um, yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah. I was like, you no. live in California. You don't no know shit. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys always <laughs> Smith people, huh? Everybody here been to it's Smith. It's good shit. I still, I still crave it. Have you, you, mm. you guys have been there? I've been there once. I still crave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's one in Midtown too. I think there's four. Um, it's still like I still create. It's so widely overpriced. Like, yeah. like it's so overpriced that, and no, I don't know anyone that works there anymore, so I can't get any discounts. So when I go yeah. there, I'm like, this is this is hard. But was I, it a good gig? Did you get good tips? No, because I only worked in the mornings because of, oh yeah, it's comedy at night. So I would open at like seven a.m. and then all the breakfast items were like half price that they were for brunch. So I was oh, just no. yeah, and sometimes we'd get busy, but like no, I I don't I wasn't making a ton of money, and I but I was also. You, know, you were surviving. You, you had just, dreams. You, you just find came ways here. to steal. <laughs> uh, you know, you just put one cup of coffee on one bill, and then you just move it all day long, and then you just rack up two fifty, two fifty, two fifty. <laughs> Listen, anybody that's worked at a restaurant knows how Is to. Is that rob. a thing that people? Yes, would do? people. If you work at a restaurant, you know how to rob it. Yeah. So, but like, but you don't do it like you don't do it big. You just do yeah. little things like you move us, you move a drink, or you separate. Like especially if somebody tips bad, you're like, mm, there's no yeah. fucking way. So I'm like, I'm not paying for this. I did. Okay. Good, I did a good job. So I would just. I would just steal. As a, as a as a restaurant <laughs> worker, I always feel like bouncers and people who work in restaurants are like sociologists because you get to see people. Like you don't even need to go to college. You get to yeah. see how people work, and you have more experience than somebody with a degree. I think you. Uh, yeah, I do think that like working at a restaurant will teach you a lot about. You can learn a lot about people the way yeah. that they treat restaurant staff. Like it is, and also I'll, I'll say this like. I worked at restaurants for over a decade. Those are the people that I'm still friends with. Like yeah. I had other jobs, but like my restaurant people are my fucking people. Like those are the people I still keep. In. Like from because you guys my, all like, do cocaine thing. together. Yeah, that's something I learned. Very like everyone who works cocaine. in a restaurant does massive amount of coke. 
That's pretty wild. <laughs> That's why I work during the day. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't want that at night anymore. But no, it is true. You do kind of, you fall into this rhythm of like when you serve drinks and food all day, when you get off work, all you want to do is eat and drink. Yeah. And then that turns into like, well, have one. And it's never one. And My then, second week yeah. working at the cellar like some of the staff invited me to the bathroom to do cook with them and i was like "Ooh, i'm a little too new here to be doing cook <laughs> in the bathroom that's crazy yeah yeah that at a certain point it's also like bathrooms are pretty it's a really gross place to be like inhaling but that's where people <laughs> would do it i know <laughs> but it's also like this is also where it smells the worst you know <laughs> yeah. like it's just so really, we need to Maybe the cook better is better with the smell of other people's buttholes. In it, yeah, you know? yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, out. so who were the worst tippers? Don't worry about being canceled. Let's tell the truth. Uh, English people. English people, huh? Like, yeah, English people. It's because they don't have it in their culture. Is that why? Yeah, people that. Mm. So, like, in the morning for breakfast, it, yeah, <clears throat> if it was people from, like, anywhere in, like, the UK or. Uh, you, like a lot of times European people, they only tip like 10% there sometimes. So, and sometimes. Um, when I was in Hawaii, it was Japanese people because they would leave you literally to the dot because they oh. don't tip in Japan. So we'd have yeah. to put this like insert in that was like, hey, we tip here because they would rack up like, they would come in like big groups of, uh, of these like tours. Right. And, like big group and they would rack up like, you know, they order steaks and wine and their, your, their bill would be like 300 400 $500 and they wouldn't leave you any tip and they like <laughs> took up the thing all night and it was just like heartbreaking because you can't do, you can't, your bosses will just be like, sucks. Sucks, and you're like, ah. Yeah. Um, Canadians in Hawaii were pretty, pretty bad, bad tippers. Yeah. One time, a, a server showed me a bill <laughs> that was four hundred and seventy-six dollars, and the tip was five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, if you come out and you spend four hundred and seventy-six dollars, and then you tip five, it's just like clearly you have the money. Who you, are you just for? being a, an yeah. asshole. They just don't know that, like we. Pay Right. You should yeah. have just put zero. Yeah. You'd be like, I hated the service. Just yeah. lie about it. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, with the change. <laughs> four thirteen, make it whatever for it's just it's so it's so wild to me. Cause you know, like if you've worked if anybody's worked in a restaurant, you know you have to pay out on that. Yeah. So like yeah. not only did I waste did you take up two and a half fucking hours of my time, but now right. I have to pay money out of that. So yeah. it's just it's always uh but yeah, I have a lot of respect for people who work in restaurants. It seems very hard, and people treat yeah. you like Old you're their kids, slave and servant. Young kids. Time. Also, sometimes famous people. I waited on Bruce Willis's daughters. They didn't tip anything. Oh, the, the, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes you'd think like famous people would tip more, and sometimes they tip way less, which is crazy. Mm. Or like their people tip less. Like I waited on Kristen Stewart, and her people tipped like 12% or something like that. I waited on um, Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Who's that? Kelly Kapowski and like no idea. Saved by the Bell yeah and oh. they like split the check and I think they thought gratuity was added so there was a big fat zero on that and I was like Kelly Kelly <laughs> no not you <laughs> but that one always surprises me because the restaurant in Santa Monica and the one in New York there was definitely like a lot of famous people that would come in yeah and um, and yeah like, uh, there's a cigar bar that I go to, and the, one of the servers told me one time Jeff Bezos came in. Oh, I bet he's the worst tipper in the world. His bill was two hundred dollars, and it tipped forty dollars. He just he tipped, tipped exactly twenty percent. Yes, and I made a poll on my Instagram to find out if that was okay or if he was being a little stingy. And most people were like, "Well, he doesn't owe anybody more than twenty percent." I mean, Robbie tips more than that. My husband, <laughs> you're like, you know, my husband tips more than that. I'm like, you so have two hundred billion dollars, you can tip more than twenty percent. And that's what's so know? crazy to me. It's like the richest. Yeah. But I mean, it's also that's probably why they stay rich because they're like nah. probably. But it's like, man, you could like a hundred dollar tip could right. make someone's oh definitely. change someone's make that like, night for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, the, like I there was a couple people in Hawaii. They were never my regulars, but there was like this one table, and everyone whenever they came in, they would tip like, I think they gave like a five hundred dollar or a thousand dollar tip, and I just I know, yeah. it's just like what a uh, man. I never got I never got lucky like that. Like every so often I'd get like, you know, a, a twenty five, thirty, forty, but like I never got those people that were like, here's just fucking five hundred dollars because you seem like a nice person. But I was like, well maybe I'm not yeah. a nice person. I don't know. But Aziz, like Aziz is a bad tipper. Oh, okay, I can see yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. He would, he would, there was a run last year where he would come to the cellar and he would just yeah. go on for an hour. Yeah, and bump everybody. 
bump everybody. Yeah. And then the staff would hate it because they were like, oh, fucking Aziz is here, so he's going to do an hour. Yeah. And then he's not going to tip anyone for the extra hour that they have to stay and work. So they all hated him. Yeah. Yeah, well, good thing. He also, he sucks. <laughs> comedy. Don't watch his special. He does suck. All right, we're not going to put that on YouTube. I'm sorry, everybody. Is this, I would love to work for you one day, you know? <laughs> well, he this is, we, we, we kind of did it. I feel like uh, they were trying to tell us to leave very passive-aggressively, but uh, what else would you like no, to say? No, I think, I think somebody just, well, I think somebody just went out for a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what it was. But does I anybody, have, anybody have any questions? So we have, yeah. We, we got five or so minutes. We'll take a question anybody if anybody has questions? any. That's <laughs> pregnancy related or life, general wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What would questions. you like to ask? Do you have everything ready for your baby? I think so. I like, it's hard because every day I'm like, fuck, do I need, what do I, like, I'm like I'm like already at the point that I'm like I need to get her one of those chairs that lights up and it's like she's gonna be just like for three fucking months. Chairs like, that light up. Yeah, he, like uh, yeah. Every time I see someone, I'm like, oh damn, do I need to get my baby? Like I'm buying all this shit for like a two year old, you know? And I'm like, she is not a person for a while. But no, I've got her bassinet. I've got a little rock. I just organized all her clothes, which is like it's. It's like, I mean, the pants are like this big, and if you're just like, <laughs> it's so. Um, she's got little baby New Balances. Like it's just, it's fucking. So, and then, and then we've got like, I've got a, a the changing table, and it's it's so funny because I haven't subscribed. Like people are like, less is more. Don't get it. I was like, bitch, I've waited five years for this. I have everything. I have a dry tape changing table. I have a wipeable one. I have a bottle rack. I have a steamer and I have the thing that goes in the dishwasher. I have three ways to wash a bottle. I don't even know if she's gonna take a bottle. Do you know what I mean? Like I have got I've got three drawers full of newborn clothes. Like she's she might be she might come out too big to even fit in the newborn clothes. But it I'm seems like, like a lot of this is everything. more about you than the baby. I did call her baby shower the other day my party. <laughs> and my husband was like, I'm sorry. I go, Ah, oh, I don't know why I said that. I was like, Well, at my party the other day, he was yeah. like, it was, it was not your party, your party. You know? <laughs> It was not your. It was not my party, but but yeah. yeah so I think I I think I'm ready, but I don't know if you know if you ever are ready. Yeah. I think uh, my sister's gonna come, and she just had a she had a baby five months ago, so I'm hoping that she'll help me with things. But I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna hate it. If I'm gonna love it. I, don't I think you love it. I think I'll love if it. You've been thinking about it since you were twelve, playing with Barbies. I think you love it. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> also 18, yeah. Did you have a midwife? Um, no. So here's the thing. I, I There's doctors now. They don't need midwives. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of witchcraft so are you talking I, about? I, I, I am like, <laughs> yes. No, we love, we're woo-woo. We're, 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 um, do you know I met with, a, I, well, I talked to a doula and I was really interested in it, but my doctor was like, are you going to get the drugs? And I was like, I'm, I want this to be as clinical as possible. Give me all the drugs. And she's like, if you're getting the drugs, you don't really need someone to coach you through the pain because you're not going to fucking feel it. So I was like, got it. So instead, I think I'm going to get a night nurse. Oh. So for a couple of days, and she just wakes you up in the middle of the night and, you know, it's like, give me your tit. Yeah. And then, and then you feed the baby and then you get to go to sleep. And then she changes the baby, burps the baby, puts the baby back down. So we're going to do that for the first two weeks. She comes like four days a week. Um, and so I think it was the same price as the doula. So I was like, well, fuck, man. I'd rather have some lady. Because I'm like, that's what I was nervous. I was like, you're going to have to set an alarm to be like, oh, wake up at 3 o'clock, wake up at 5 o'clock. I was right. like, I know me, and I'm a sleepy bitch. And like, I'm like, <laughs> so... So I got uh, a night nurse instead. Uh, we'll That's get you a Jamaican night nurse so your baby can speak with her an name accent. Is, her name is, her name is I, think, I, don't, I don't know if she's Jamaican, but her name is Nanny Annie, and she seems very fun. <laughs> that sounds pretty Jamaican to me. <laughs> Nanny Annie? Fuck Nanny yeah. Annie, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully. You had a friend? I had a friend who had a nanny who was Filipino. They're not Filipino, and then their child started speaking with Filipino. I love Filipino accent. That's I great. Grew up, I grew That's up great. around all Filipinos. Yeah. I would love that. Were they white? No, it was it'd have been funny if it was like a pure white baby going to school with a Filipino accent I, I would love that I would love that <laughs> like, what the I, told, I was like I need somebody to speak French to my baby so that they speak uh, a different language oh, maybe I'll nanny for you one day a week that's what I'm saying yeah, yeah. I'll speak TJ, French TJ, to TJ you gotta yeah. come in and get my baby uh, speaking yeah. a different language yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. if there's no more questions I think you, I'll you let... have a name for the baby we do, but we haven't told anyone yet. It's um, 
It's, it's a big a secret. secret. But it does start with a G, and nobody's been able to guess it yet. G-G-G. So, Gigi's going to be her nickname because her, her middle name is also G. So she, we'll call her Gigi, but... Gina. Gina. No. Gina. No, see, a lot of people think that. A lot of people Gina. say... G- no, but I love the name Georgina. Georgina? No. <laughs> what is this, the 80s? <laughs> <laughs> with the G? Why would Jessica, Jessica with a G? G? My best friend's name is Jessica with a G. Gershiku? <laughs> <laughs> Gershiku! She has five friends that are all from a G. That's so tough because her whole life people are like, Jessica? And she's like, nah, it's Jessica. <laughs> she's just an annoying person. Yeah, my parents wanted to name me Kirsten. Thank God, because then, yeah, my whole life, yeah. I'd have to be like, no, yeah, they, I'd have to be like, it's actually Kirsten. <laughs> Kirsten Dunst. And then my grandma wanted to name me Lolly, so we, we lucked out with Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about Jessica. Uh, I'll think about yeah. Jessica, and not Gabrielle either, although that I was like the name when I was younger. I think that into account. Your input yeah. does not matter here, <laughs> but okay. Jelena? Not Jillian. No, not Jillian. <laughs> not Jillian. <laughs> I know. Or it can be with a G. It could be with a Gracie. G. Gracie. No, I like Grace no, too. G-G. No, but it doesn't. But it doesn't. It's only because her middle name is also. All right, listen, yeah. everybody. There's already a name in case you guys <laughs> forgot that no, part. They're guessing so. it. They're guessing. They're guessing. Not, <laughs> yes. No, it's 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 not common, but it's also not like made up. You know, we're we're we're, we're, we're <laughs> yeah, we're not like oh, her name's gonna be Gugaku da 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 or whatever. <laughs> like it's a real name. It's just not used that often, but. But well, it's cute. We like it. Thank you. I can't wait to find out the name. Thank you for doing she's this. She's coming. And she's coming soon. Yeah, now thank you. All of us got to talk and meet Gugagu. Mugatu. What'd you say? Go Go Yes. <laughs> my baby's name is Gogru. Gertrude. Gogru. And, well, my husband's last name is Slovic. That would be such a mean last name. Gogru Slovic. <laughs> Do you want me to wax your butthole? <laughs> My name is Gogru. <laughs> it's gonna Casey Ball time, everybody. Thank you very much.